<laughs> Thank you to Fictions of Every Kind. Sarah, especially author of Brick Mother, available at fine bookshops all over the place. <laughs> uh, you gotta go get yourself a copy. I read it this summer. It's tight. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna read a few from a collection of poems. Um, it's called Boldface. I will gesture with it prominently in the next few minutes. Um, if you'd like a copy, come see me. Grab one. Come see me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, and Sarah, when you want to hear one more poem, ring the bell. <laughs> Is that cool? Yeah. All right, because I got a special one that I wrote just for today. So. Oh. Um, how many of you have heard me read before? It looks like a new crowd, right? Oh, wait, I see hands. Anzir knows me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, you guys are you know, hardcore. Um, but okay, well, I'll try and avoid some of the usual ones, but I will, um, I will have recourse to those later. Um, but hearts, man, smoking is bad for your heart. <laughs> this one's called smoking. <laughs> um, the basso lung oyster, the shaker of rooms, boom, here comes the choke victim. Have you seen him check the size of his cilia bending, a palm frond on a so-named beach, rehearsing a death rattle, breath a new battle, hauling ass upstairs, he don't need to knock no more. Lord, don't let me get that sick. Lord, I'll be good and clean and quick if you don't let me get dead. Lord, be my oxygen tank instead. Lord, tracheotomy, honestly, I don't want to be hobbled by the atmosphere. I don't need a new lump here. I want to pick plums from the stumps of a lung orchard at a full run. My ashtray full of guilty cigarettes. Twelve calendars rolled up and lit. My clothes smell like shit. Bits of leaf. An addiction-seeking missile. <laughs> I'm warmed up. I'm clearly warmed up. Okay, okay, okay. Um, this is another one about my heart. This is, uh, this is for my wife. Um, this, oh, sorry, did, yes, yes. Yeah. My t-shirt is a depiction of a Sasquatch wrestling a unicorn. I'm so glad you noticed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is called <laughs> Marriage is Not Ending. You live in the same world I do. So let's kill crows with rocks, if you will. If you won't, it won't as it is wont to do. You live in the same world I do. So do two birds twittering, too. Singing on my doorstep, signing on my newsprint. A bee pees somehow. And it can fly. You can be up or down. This is the same as trying to be two. This is a powerful comma. Come on, you don't expect me to believe that this insistence is the same as intensification? No. That is precisely the point, a precy of a pointed critique. They lived in the same world I live in. They insist on living, but you are a life. You are alive. This is the same world as a minute. It tastes <clears throat> like a second. This is the powerful period. You are alive in the same world I do. I do the world too, as you do. I like it. I do. <laughs> Two more, two more from the collection, maybe. I, oh, you can 
being, being a flex. Um, this is a question that my last poem is going to ask again. Okay, but um, this is called. You gotta listen close, bro. Right? <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. So like, you're gonna remember this moment, and then you're gonna think about it like ten minutes later, right? <laughs> okay. uh, so um, this is called. Uh, they say change is good for you. They say change is good for you. So today you don't pop two, you pop three. And maybe now you see that your desk isn't an anchor but a tree and its branches spread out. And underneath, you're completely dry and shielded from them UV rays. And it strikes you that you haven't been to that club since last day. You know, the one where the DJ sharpens his needle and double clicks the jungly switch and the dance floor skips to the beat of your own personal trip. And you hip hop out onto the breeze that insinuates itself between you and your shirt sleeves take a drag of pure ease. And when the man on the street says, please, you reach into your two skinny jeans and find the change he's pleading for, and you dig in deeper and find there's more and more, and you treat yourself to a coffee and a copy of Leaves of Grass, and you sing the body internet, you place your bet against death, and you win a golden pen that's sharp as a pin, and you ask for a glass of writer's block, and the girl at the counter stops you from looking at anything and you see, you see fundamentally the starry yin yang tattoo on her left breast and all the flakes of metal in her face and you wonder just how long it took for her earlobes to take up so much space and you trace your finger around a latte stain and you look at Whitman dead in the grave and you learn to fall like rain in autumn, or you learn to autumn like rain in fall, <laughs> and you stall a bit and make a note, and the note's about truth, and you're still thinking about the counter girl and you, and you wonder if she left any place on her body whole and true. And Whitman's outside looking at Babel Goose and stalking Goose, and for the first time in history, the person on your left's horoscope is precisely true and right, because tonight's the night that she's going to meet a tall, dark, and handsome fight. And the counter girl asks if you're finally through. You look up. She smiles. You squint. And she says, change is good for you. <laughs> okay, I don't think, I, I'm going to read one more from this thing and then I'm going to move on to a couple more. Or I want, this one's long though. That's fine. Okay, you got to strap, y'all got to strap in because this one's a long one, right? Um, I teach, I teach students. <laughs> Apparently, I teach people how to write. Where? Yeah. Where? Do you want to come to my class? Sure. That'd be awesome. I would love to see it. Because there's not enough beards. There's not enough beards in my class. I don't think it. it's, it's true. It's true. I have a represent for everybody. And this is scanty. This is scanty. No, it's like, honestly, it's all girls, man. And there's like two beards. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. That's dicey. Are you my, are you my students in the room? Any beard? And all the bearded ladies didn't show up. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I, um, I, I I tell my students that like good literature answers like the big questions, right? And then I break all the rules with this one. This is all questions. Um, this is called outside the box. Um, I'm already strapping. It's a long one.
<laughs> what if the government spent its military budget on restoring classic cars? What if snails were money? What if blackboards and whiteboards and smartboards were segregated? What if time really was money? What if you could weigh a photon? What if you could lose weight fast? What if you could really grow your penis four inches? What if you could get ripped? What if ripping four inches was how to lose weight fast? What if that guy in Nigeria really did have 20 million dollars in an account and he could get out of the country fast because his uncle was being pursued by a mad dictator and you could get a 20% cut of the proceeds? <laughs> what if permanent markers really were permanent? What if there was no more internet? What if the oil actually ran out and you had the last bucket? What if we have already seen the apex of our civilization? What if we're still evolving? Could you determine this with a thorough examination of your Facebook friends? <laughs> what if enough has already been written about the Lower East Side? What if all the walls were made of paper? What if all the floors were sponges saturated with ink? What if this was a story and not a poem? What if someone already did this? What if you read this? What if rough drafts were all you get? And that advice your father gave you about measuring twice and cutting once had no practical application in <laughs> your life? What if our education system produced a generation of cut and paste wizards that can make anything look original? What if you were conservative in conversation and liberal with your lunch meat? <laughs> What if you couldn't give up just yet? <laughs> what if I wasn't here? What if gravity was on a pay-as-you-go basis? What if we had cracked the code? What if hallmarks were the only thing you could write about in a hallmark card? What if nobody had invented yeast? What if your password was password? What if you wrote something and posted it online and it meant everything that you thought you meant? and people responded to it based on your race? What if your profile picture was a landscape? What if you had to make everything you owned? What if you had to make, what if you had to make everything you owned? What if you had to waste everyone you knew? What if you had to trace everything you thought? Had to return everything you bought? Had to home a scared crow? Had to eat a sacred cow? Had to decide right now? What if you had to pick a plan based on your usefulness and not your usage? What if you had to have an exit strategy, had to hammer, had to have a hammer, had to move tomorrow, had to stare at a goat, had to bury a hatchet and had no shovel, had to call it home? What if you had to have a nap, had to take a map, oh, sorry, what if you had to have a nap, what if you had to have a map, had to hang out, had to hang up, had to hang ten, had two heads and two hangovers, had to read all of this and ask the question, had to eat cereal for political reasons and watch the news for breakfast? <laughs> what if language was everything? What if all there was was language? What if verbs cost money? if you had more than Bill Gates? What if you had to bill Bill Gates? What if you had to gate Bill Gates? <laughs> what if you had to gate Bill Gates and bill Bill Gates for that gate? <laughs> what if you had to live on the bill that you gave Bill Gates for his new gate? What if it was a scandal, Bill Gates in Bill Gates, Bill Gate, Gate, Bill Gates? <laughs> What if you had to think outside the box? If the box was the size of this room, this house, this tent, the countryside, the nation, the planet, the galaxy, the known universe, the unknown universe? What if the box was a horizon? What if you had to reconcile the very large and the very small? If superlatives weren't enough to express the largeness or the smallness? had to resort to measurement, technical jargon, nano, meso, femto, mega, giga, bigger. 
What if imagination wasn't enough? What if you had to work? What if this was my job? What if it's all economic? What if marketing was an evolutionary advantage? If nature was ergonomic? <coughs> if moths sold silk? If caterpillars unionized, if beavers pelted, if rabbits skinned, if olives pressed, if cows milked, if sheep milled. What if it really was butter? Was <laughs> 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 the improved? Man, what if raspberry was blue? What if pubs served toads we could lick for a night's entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> then you could order a toad for the road <laughs> and complain on Monday morning that you had too many and that you'd never toad again. <laughs> but for lunch, you'd shrug and you'd say, ah, oh, the best cure for a toad is the one that bit you. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and Toad in the Hole, sorry, and Toad in the Hole would take on an entirely new and deviant and sexualized meaning. Getting Toad in the rump would replace a good ass kicking, and Mr. Toad would become a counterculture symbol, a lovable rogue with a paper smoking a fag, a symbol of why everybody must get Toad. <laughs> What if they run out of comic books to turn into movies? What if they run out of TV shows to remake? There was an old lady who lived in a reboot. What if everything that came after postmodernism was characterized by a healthy skepticism about remastered narratives? What if you were reading this? What if I could imitate your voice perfectly? Would it be the same? Or is there some part of you that can't be reproduced? What if you lived in your body?